Exodus 13 and verse 20. And it just simply says, They took their journey from Succoth and camped in Etham at the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and a night a pillar of fire to give them light, so as to go by day and night. He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night from before the people. And uh, the, the truth of this is, is that Israel left Egypt, which was a type of sin, and they came out with a high and holy hand, and they crossed the Red Sea, which is a type of the blood. You know, the, the Old Testament's types and shadows of the fulfillment of the New Testament. And the Red Sea is a type of the blood of Jesus, and they went through the Red Sea. They came out on the other side, and they were to journey across desert, and they were to go into Canaan. The picture is, is that you and I have been redeemed from Egypt, the world, and we have gone through, been cleansed by the blood of Jesus, and now we're on our journey in this wilderness. We are in a wilderness just as surely as Israel was in a desert. This world is not your friend. This world is not your home. This world, if you follow it, will take you to hell. The, the, the culture, the mindset, every value that the world has, it is against God. This world is not our friend. And as we see this, they came through the desert. And as they came through the desert, they were to reach Canaan. You and I are going through the desert of this world, and our Canaan is heaven. Somebody say amen. We're going to end up in heaven. What was going to help them through this harrowing journey across this hot desert? It was the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. It's not hard to figure out that that is the type of the Holy Spirit, the cloud by day and the pillar of fire. He was above them. The Holy Spirit was above them, the cloud by day and the pillar of fire. The Holy Ghost is always above us. And that means He knows more. He's stronger. He's better. And He knows the way through the, the wilderness. And there was only one obligation of Israel, and that was to follow, to follow the cloud. All you got to do is look up and keep going where the cloud goes. That's not difficult. You know, the commandments of the Lord are not grievous. The things that God asks us to do, we are well able. We can easily do those things. But you know, all they had to do was stay with the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. The Holy Ghost is our guarantee. As long as we stay with Him, He will get us from bellflower to heaven. I said the Holy Ghost will give a guarantee we will get from bellflower all the way to heaven. All I got to do is stay with the cloud and the pillar of fire. Somebody say amen. amen. But herein lies the rub because, you know, we're so independent minded and we think we know as much as God and we are not in submission to authority. And so we choose our own path and there are many other roads, but they all lead to destruction. There was only one way for Israel to get from that wilderness over to Canaan, and that was to follow the cloud. There wasn't two paths, five paths, ten paths. There was only one. Israel had to decide what to go, where to follow. All we have to do is to follow the Holy Spirit. He will get us there. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Israel did not decide the path that they would go. The Holy Spirit decided that path. It was not for them to decide the direction, and they could not control the movement either. The Bible is clear in these chapters that whenever the cloud stopped, Israel stopped. When the cloud moved, Israel moved. When the pillar of fire moved, they moved. When the pillar of fire stopped, they stopped. We are not our own. We are bought with a price. We belong to God. And as a result, we obey the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has been sent to get us from here to heaven. And if we'll obey and stay with Him, we will never, never miss the mark. Can I hear an amen? When God says move, we want to sit. 
And when God says sit, we get antsy and we want to move. We want to be our own authority. We want to take things in our hand. We think we know a better path to mark out than God does. We think we're smarter than the Holy Spirit. He's not obeying our will. He's not giving direction we want. He's not taking us in the path we want. We think we know a better way. If you think you're smarter, then go out there and choose another way. But there, there is nothing but destruction out there. There is only one way for us to get from here to heaven, and that is to follow the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. Humble yourself and obey the Holy Spirit. Stay with the Holy Spirit. Talk to the Holy Spirit every day. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. Jesus said the Spirit will guide you into all truth not just some truth all truth but you got to be humble to hear you got to be humble to listen and you got to be even more humble to obey can i hear an amen as long as they stayed with the cloud and the fire, there were several things. Number one, there was a promise in front of them. They could testify that they were on a journey and they were going somewhere with a destination. Do you realize what a joy it is for the child of God to know that as long as we follow the Holy Spirit, we're on a journey going to a destination? Do you realize the world clamors for meaning in life? They're lost like sheep. They don't know what they believe. You talk to them one month and they believe in crystals. You talk Talk to them the next month that there's some something else that they, they, they're all the time changing the Bible calls them lost sheep without a shepherd they go on a meaningless road to nowhere and it's filled with regrets and terror at the end of their life but the Bible declares in Proverbs 418 the path of the just is as the shining light which shines more and more into the perfect day I have a promise if I stay with the Holy Spirit I'm going to end up in heaven someday and that makes my life meaningful that makes my life worthy. That makes my life have understanding and purpose. And I am driven. Can I hear an amen? amen? People live for their body. And they work out. And their body becomes their God. But you know and I know that old man time takes possession of you. And I don't care how long you work to keep the muscles on top. Sooner or later they're going to fall underneath. And when you wave at your grandkids, you're going to look like two arms waving. And I can tell you that everything is falling. And everything, and, and people live for money. But that money as high as you pile it isn't going to do you any good for where you're going. For when you breathe your last breath, all that you live for stays right here. All that you planned and schemed and, and, and were coveting is gone in a heartbeat. But whenever we enter eternity and we have been living with God, we have a promise that there's a gate called heaven that's going to open up and we're going to have a Jesus that stand there and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. We have a promise. We're on a path. We don't just wander around. We're on a path. And it's an especially narrow path. Many there be that walk the other way. Broad is the path that goes there. Narrow is the path. The Holy Ghost. There was only one way through this wilderness. And they had to follow very specifically what the Holy Spirit led them to with the cloud and the pillar of fire. And we must also follow the Holy Spirit in order to stay on this path. Number three, it was power. No Amalekite could attack them as long as they stayed under the cloud. Think about that. No Amalekite, no, no Hittite, no Amorite could attack. The fear and dread of them fell on all the nations where they went. And everybody was scared to death because they saw the supernatural vision of God above those people. And they said, what is this people that has come out into this wilderness and traveling through our land? They weren't about to attack. The power of God was their rear reward their front guard. Somebody say amen. The other night I heard gunshots going off in the middle of the night and I set up startled as it woke me up and I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit say I got angels at the front door and angels at the back door. You got nothing to dread and fear. I fanned the covers and rolled over and went back to sleep. God is in charge of my house. There is a power of God that protects God's people. I'm not guaranteed by Smith and Wesson. I'm guaranteed by Father 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I got nothing to dread and nothing to fear. I'm not going to leave this planet till God says I leave this planet. No Amalekite could attack them. And the fear of God fell on all the nations that were around them. Why? Because Exodus 14, 24 says, The Lord looked down upon the Egyptians through the pillar of cloud and the fire, and he troubled the army of the Egyptians. God looked down through the cloud and the fire, and he worked his power through the fire and the cloud. God works his power through the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit shows up, power shows up. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is coming upon you. We have to remember, this is not as much about speaking in tongues and shouting as it is to have authority and power over the powers of hell and the demons of darkness and principalities and spirits. We have authority over them because Christ lives in us and the Holy Ghost is upon us. God's power looks down from heaven and works right down through the Holy Spirit in me. Can I hear an amen in the name of Jesus? God is powerful and His power works through His Holy Spirit. And as long as the church is here, the church will be feared by those around. You see, today, in many circles, the world has lost their respect and fear of the church because the church has lost its cloud and its fire. And we're just a name only. We're just in ceremony only. We're just in word only. But there's no power. There's not enough power to blow the fuzz off a peanut. And so they don't have any authority in God. But where the Holy Spirit shows up in the church, there will be authority and there will be power and the fear of God will be manifest among people. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Not only was there power, there was provision. The Bible says not one sick one was among them as long as they stayed with the cloud and the pillar of fire. Can I hear an amen? Not one weak one was among them. It didn't matter if they was 85. They were walking around like a spring chicken. They were going somewhere. They had a promise. They had a path. They had a power. And they had a provision. And as long as they stayed with the cloud, they had enough juice, enough energy, and enough strength to get over to the promised land. You may be 85. One of our ladies said today is her birthday and she's 90 years old still driving her own car still comes to church here every week I thank God that as long as I'm under the cloud and the pillar of fire I'm going to have strength for the journey I can fight the good fight I'm not weak I'm strong because the Holy Ghost makes me strong can I hear an amen there was no plague that would come near them. The Egyptian uh, culture was filled with all kinds of plagues. You can't believe. I read a medical book from that day under the pharaohs. Uh, and whenever they would have an open sore, they would treat it with cow dung and rub cow dung in the open sore, thinking they were helping the blood problem. Do you know what will happen when you rub cow dung in an open sore? You're going to die. And, and their, their book of medicine was unbelievable. What they did, everything they did was to destroy human beings. It was just a spirit of demons that gave them those things to try to destroy more Egyptians. But there was not one sick one among them. There was no plague near them. And they had food and water. They had water supernaturally supplied. They had manna and they had quail. Jesus flips over to the New Testament and says, seek first the kingdom of God and my righteousness and I'll add everything that you need. I'll give you new clothes from Target. I'll give you a a hamburger to eat. I'll put gas in your tank. I'll take care of your children. I'll put food on your table. You seek me and stay under the cloud and keep walking with me and I'll take care of all of your needs. All of your needs. All of your needs. All of your needs will be taken care of. Don't be like the world and get greedy and try to get more and more and worry about things. Don't worry about things. If God can clothe the grass of the field that's burned up tomorrow in the oven, can He take care of you? If God can feed the sparrow, if God can feed the whales in the ocean, amen? When those whales go to the Alaskan Sea, they, they eat 4,000 pounds of krill a day. 4,000 pounds a day. And then they go for about five months and don't eat anything. And they go out to the Hawaiian waters and they have their babies and they come back. But when they're up in Alaska, they eat 4,000 pounds of fish a day. And who does that? Who can feed that? 
Which government agency is pouring that food in those wells? That's God. What welfare system is taking care of them? God is taking care of them. Somebody say hallelujah. God takes care. Get your head out of the world. Quit, quit living and thinking like the world. Quit being troubled and full of fear. Get your confidence because you're under the cloud and the pillar of fire. God will take care of his people. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. The last thing is they were a people prepared. They were a people prepared by God. You see, as long as you stay with the cloud and the fire, the Bible says coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel was a cloud of darkness to the one and it gave light by night to the other so that one could not come near the other at night. Egypt couldn't come to Israel because there was a cloud at night that threw gross darkness on them. And it was a buffer between the enemy and Israel. Now the same cloud offered light over Israel, but it offered darkness over the enemy. You get it? God's giving light to you so you can see the path. You can have assurance. You can know what you need to know. You can see what you need to see. Somebody say hallelujah. He's illuminating your path. Like the time all those years ago when I was an evangelist and the Lord spoke to me and said, go to the bank and get your money out. I had one CD. I'd been preaching 12 years and I had one CD, little, little amount. But it was all I had. And the Lord, I was praying, the Lord said, what did he do? He shined, he shined a light on me. His illumination came to my soul. Go get your money out today. So I went down there and the woman said, what do you want to do? I want to take my money out. Well, you're going to lose a quarter's interest. I said, whatever, just give me my money. She said, well, why are you taking your money out of this bank? I said, because I was praying this morning and God told me to take my money out of your bank. She got this worried look. And she said, ooh, my husband and I got all of our life savings, our retirement in this bank. I hope everything's okay. What do you think? I said, I can't speak for you. I can just speak for me. God shined a light on me and told me to get my money out of here. See, what was light to me was darkness to her. She didn't hear a word. She didn't get illumination. She didn't receive instruction. I did. Why? I'm following the cloud. And the cloud's taking care of not only of my food, taking care of my business. The cloud's up in my business. The cloud's taking care of my banking. She said, well, I sure hope nothing's happening. I said, by the way, does this bank have FDIC insurance? No, we've applied for it. We're in the process now of applying for FDIC insurance. I said, well, I don't know. I just know what the God, God said. Do you know, several weeks later, the oil crisis hit Oklahoma. There were 16 banks in Oklahoma that went out of business, declared bankruptcy, and that bank was one of them. And they did not have FDIC insurance. And the people that had money in that bank got 20 cents on the dollar in federal bankruptcy court. How would you like to pull your money out and it's worth one-fifth what you put in? God was protecting me. Why? Because I'm walking in the cloud. I'm walking under the cloud. I'm walking under the cloud. Why is God going to protect you? Because you stay with the Holy Ghost. Come on, get back to Saturday night prayer. Get back to Tuesday morning prayer. Get back to Thursday night church services. Get back where you belong. Get back under the cloud. Get back with your daily Bible reading. Quit being lazy. You can't afford it. Drop other stuff, but make sure you take care of the cloud. You need the protection. You need the power. You need the provision of the cloud. It's your life. Your whole life is tied up in that cloud. Your future is in the cloud. The Holy Spirit, He's your future. Make sure you stay with the Holy Ghost. I tell you something. I may fail in a lot of areas, but I'm not going to fail in praying. I'm going to stay under the cloud. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Like the woman in, in, in 19, when did they bomb Pearl Harbor? 47? 
Somebody that's old, tell me. 41, they bombed it? Whenever it was. Brother Tucker told me this story. That woman over there that had those different churches, she told she was in prayer. The Holy Ghost under the cloud gave her illumination, light, darkness to everybody else, light to her. Everybody, catastrophe is going to hit on a certain day, whatever it was. Catastrophe is coming. Everybody in this church, take some oil home and anoint your house. Put it under the blood. They did it. Within a week, the raid came, the Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor. Brother Tucker told me when he was a young man in the armed forces in the Navy that he went there and went in the foyer of that church and they had blown up pictures of, from the air that showed the people that lived in that church their houses from the air. And every one of them were unscathed. The houses next to them, behind them, and in front of them were blown up, had bullets. But those houses were all untouched because they had the protection of the cloud and the illumination of the cloud. Somebody say, amen. We live in a, a dark world, a harrowing world. There are things that could happen. We never know what's going to happen next. But I can tell you one thing. You need your house under the blood of Jesus. Come on. Somebody say amen. 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 Let's go get the oil. Somebody run back there and get the oil and bring it out here. We'll just conclude this service with an oil service. I didn't plan on going this direction. The Holy Ghost orchestrated and wrote the choreography for this service, <laughs> the order. He decides what's going to happen. But I just feel like we as God's people, we need leading, protection. We need the light. We need God to illuminate. Come on. When you pray, say, Holy Ghost, illuminate my life. Shine your light on me. Show me what I'm missing. Show me what I need to do. Give me instruction. Amen? Amen. And if we'll do that, God will honor us. And I want you to take a bottle of oil, and I think you ought to anoint your house where you go in, anoint the, over the door frame. Anything else you feel, I had the Lord tell me one time to anoint my car. I anointed my car. Because we need God's protection. There's no magic in this oil, but when you pray with this oil, there's an anointing that will protect. Come on, stand up with me, everybody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lift up your hand to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we dedicate this oil to you. And we ask you as God's people, take this home and use it, that you will protect their property, their houses, their children, their families. We pray that God, as we anoint with oil, that you will honor us and that we see the light of God and we'll have the protection of God. Help us to stay with the cloud and to stay with the fire. In Jesus' precious name, everybody said, Amen. Amen.